To tell you more about this new alliance, I'm pleased to announce Mr. James Cameron and Mr. Vince Pace. Thank you, Judge. Well, thanks for having us here. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're pretty excited about this. Super, so excited we're feeding back. We're coming with energy. Um, you know, this, this, I think, is such a powerful signal of what you're doing in 3D, uh, this, this uh, strategic alliance and, and alignment with us. And I think it's a great statement, statement to the broadcast industry. As Vince and I, you know, firmly believe that the, the future of 3D is uh, is in broadcast and it's really going to explode over the next couple of years. And so we're scrambling to stay ahead of the rising curve of demand. Uh, we've been in the 3D game for uh, 12 years now, uh, and we were the first in to to uh, make uh, motion pictures in 3D with our camera systems and our workflows, and then we were the first to do. Uh, live broadcast, sporting events, special events, music, and so on, uh, with our systems. And the company's grown so rapidly over the, over the last few years, and we, we project those those growth curves out. You know, we're 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 so excited about what's happening right now, but it's a little bit daunting staying ahead of the, the rapid rate of technology change uh, and, and so on. So that we have to have powerful alliances with people who are major players in, in broadcast in order to really be able to fulfill this future and, and supply the kind of quality 3D entertainment that, uh, that people are going to demand because initially people are going to be paying a premium for this stuff just like they do in the, in the movies. Uh, and so, you know, we've got to make sure that the quality is very high. And so we recently rebranded our company, uh, Cameron Pace Group, and, and we're, we're on a kind of relentless path to, to grow the 3D business for us to, to remain uh, uh, market leaders in the, in the technology and the workflows. It's very exciting what we're going to be able to do together in terms of creating uh, new products, integrating them into the, into the workflows. Of course, we've been working together for, for a long time. This really just formalizes the relationship and, uh, and, and uh, you know, puts it kind of in the, in the forefront of, of people's minds that this is what's happening. And uh, Vince is going to tell you more about some of the, the technical specifics yeah, no, it's great to be here and it's great to join in this relationship with uh, Grass Valley because we announced it at uh, NAB this year that we were going to focus on the business of 3D. I think you're very much aware that the projects that we've been involved in as a company, which now totals about 140 sports productions um, and 27 feature films, have been a successful adoption of 3D when done right. I think the public really likes that, you know, enhancement of entertainment. And, but how are we going to achieve those goals? How are we going to you know, get all the way through this challenge of making 3D more cost effective and, and making it more similar to the 2D approach? And what you're hearing today is exactly how we're going to achieve that. By forming alliance with Grass Valley, we're going to work together for those integrated solutions, not just for the future, but for the here and now. Currently, we're shooting uh, an event called the US Open um, in the States where we're using some of our shadow technology, which is a perfectly integrated 2D, 3D solution. It's a 2D operator, it's a 2D backbone, and by the way, we're delivering a 2D and 3D signal at the same time. Um, oftentimes, this is referred to as a 5D production. Um, but, the, but the goal, make no mistake about it, is cost-effective solutions so we can increase the volume of 3D production and we could change this whole, you know, um, uh, dilemma that we have that, you know, there, there's, there's not enough content or there's not enough screens and really start to move 3D in a business direction where it makes sense. Here's your shadow system. Yeah, so we, we have the shadow system on the screen and those of you who don't know uh, what it is, you can certainly go by the booth at, at Grass Valley. We have a system there, but it's using the telemetry of the 2D operator's lens and allowing the, the delivery to 2D to be very independent in frame size than the 3D, but the similarity is the point of interest. We all want to see the same story. We're not going after, 3D does not differ in the storyline from 2D. And so what the shadow system allows it to do is we read the telemetry for the focus distance and the subject distance, and we, we incorporate that into the 3D result. 
And, and this is a very cost-effective solution. It is going on right now where we're covering two courts in a major event where one court is automated and driven by the 2D production. And that's so critical to this relationship, it's so critical to the industry, that we integrate the solutions and come up with a very clean and, and determined business plan that makes sense to the industry to increase the amount of 3D production. 14 camera systems. Yeah, there's 14 camera systems on, nine of which are using this shadow technology um, to produce the, um, the event. And, and so this business of saying, well, we, we have fewer cameras or we don't tell the whole story, it's going to go away. It, it just With this relationship, we're going to go beyond that. We're going to tell the complete story in 3D, and we're going to enhance the complete entertainment value of the product. And, uh, and we're going to do that through technology. We're not going to increase your crew size, we're not going to increase your dependency on, on additional personnel, and we're going to manage those costs so that when you compare them to the revenue delta, they make sense to you. And, and that, that is good business for us. I would rather you talk to me about 3D. Uh, from your perspective, um, where's 3D going? It's just going to become ubiquitous. I mean, really, that's, that's the thing. It, it's the, the next big wave is going to be broadcast. We think it's going to roll out globally uh, it'll, at different rates in different markets but that's uh, that's happening it's it's inexorable you know where people talk about the future of 3d and in reality 3d is is the present we're doing it right now where our, our trucks are out our gear is out our people are out um, you know we're uh, we're expanding rapidly we we see broadcast obviously is the biggest uh, expansion that, that's going to happen over the next couple of years People really going to sit in their uh, living rooms with glasses on? I guess I must be an idiot because <laughs> I think I think they are. Yeah. I think they'll sit in the, I think they'll sit in the living room with uh, the passive glasses on more readily than with the uh, the rechargeable active glasses that are expensive. I think if you can just have a bowl of of the disposable or hopefully recyclable glasses in your living room, you can you can watch TV socially the way we tend to do, which is in which is in groups. Uh, if we're watching uh, individually, chances are it's going to be uh, you know a laptop or a tablet or something like that. And there you won't need the glasses very very shortly. Those will be auto stereoscopic because they're a single user paradigm. But when you have a multi user system, you do you will need to use glasses to decode the image uh, for the next few years. Let's say three to five years, and then after that they'll they'll be able to offer full resolution with multiple viewer viewer angles. So we're getting there, you know. It's, it's, it's content driven, in a sense. The more content there is, the more people get excited, the more they want, the more they'll adopt the technology. Right now we're, you know, the, the content is just starting to take off. And in most markets, only a few programs are, are offered. But, you know, it was the same thing with movies five, five six years ago. And obviously you broke, famously broke the back of that. Uh, where you, do you think there's a well, we got a lot of credit. We got a lot of credit for that, but there had been a, a, a number. There had been a building wave of releases before Avatar, and then, of course, a lot of a lot of follow-on afterwards. So it was really part of a wave. It was it was one of the more visible titles within an, an overall wave that that was uh, you know growing uh, industry-wide. And that's why we're at I think 22,000 uh, digital 3D theaters worldwide right now, and growing growing rapidly. And you speak about Avatar, um, why do you think that particularly was so successful? Is it simply the story or is it, was it technology driven? Yeah, you know, the thing people have to understand is that 3D isn't going isn't to save a bad movie. And, you know, so it's still, still got to be storytelling. It, you, you've still got to do all of your, your, your art and creativity as a, as a filmmaker. And the same thing is, is true in television production. If you've got a dog show, doesn't matter if it's in 3D or not, you know. So I think what people are learning now is that 3D is is not a guarantee that you are going to have a great time. You might be watching a very high quality version of a very poor film, you know. So people still have to mm. have to be selective um, uh, about what they what they watch in the, in the way that they're normally selective. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, we feel that it's incumbent on us as 3D practitioners to maintain the highest possible standard. We don't want the 3D to be the thing that was wrong mm -hmm. with the movie. Mm -hmm. Let the movie be a dog, but don't let the 3D <laughs> be the reason you didn't like it. So what's next? 
what we're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, exactly. we're taking taking 3D on the road, taking it global, creating okay. our own. Uh, so why Cross Valley? Oh. Well, they were a perfect strategic partner. I think we announced at NAB that we were going to concentrate on the business model uh, for 3D, uh, formalizing the CPG, you know, and, and the most important part of that is the group mentality. We're going to team up with these guys. These guys know production well. They know production solutions well. And uh, we're not coming in here stating we know all about production. We're coming in here stating that we have a great understanding of the 3D model and the solutions that are, are driven for that model. By combining our efforts, I think we're giving the consumer the best end result. And that end result is sellable when done correctly. So, yeah. so yeah. we're going to reduce the cost. We're going to raise the entertainment bar in 3D. We're going to cover more of the story with multiple cameras and increasing the camera count. And we're going to do that through these strategic partnerships uh, that we, we just announced with Grass Valley. And we're going to do it worldwide. Yeah. I mean, that's really the issue, is that we've got to grow this market worldwide. It can't just it can't just grow in in the UK or, or in the US. Well, Australia? My next question would be, how does Australia fit into that? Yeah. Well, Australians seem to have been early adopters of 3D for some reason. I mean, every f movie production that I've been involved in has done disproportionately well in Australia, um, uh, you know, relative to the to the you know population of the country. So for some reason, Australians seem to seem to like 3D. So that'll be a, a really good place for us to move aggressively in broadcast as well. You know, which probably will lead with sports. I would have thought.